bike, 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 bike. It's the bro show. It's Lucas and Jacob. Hi, bro. Hi, bro. So let's talk about the Illuminati. Okay. So there's been speculation for years whether it's real or whether it's fake. Whether it's funding the bro show. In certain circles, people wonder. They say, how, how is this podcast already surpassing Caller Daddy? Obviously, that little triangle man is behind it. I saw people saying the opposite about the bro show. They were saying it's flapping so hard. They think it's the first flap of the Illuminati. Oh, and they're saying maybe like they're starting to lose their touch. Yeah, like uh, maybe the Illuminati isn't as powerful as it once was because why is the new Illuminati podcast not above Call Her Daddy? That's what people are kind of oh saying. God, that's what that's what they're saying. Yeah, that's okay. what I heard. Hey, all right. It's good to know what what the people are saying out there. <laughs> No, but I just had to put this on my topic list for today's bro show because I was watching the Ariana Grande. What's her co-star's name? I'm not familiar with like these Broadway people. Cynthia? She almost has an E guy. But is it Cynthia? Said. I feel um, like we need to fact check. I can't I can't um let people down that hard. That's the this thing. This is the is new that- this is the wicked girl. She's been on all this Broadway stuff. She has a Tony. She almost has an E guy. And isn't the only thing she's missing is a Oscar? She already has a Grammy? She almost has an EGOT. <laughs> yeah, she, has, she she does have all that, I think. <laughs> oh my gosh. Her name is Cynthia Olivo. Cynthia Olivo. Oh, okay. I had, I had it right. Cynthia. So Cynthia and Ariana, the two stars of the upcoming blockbuster hit, Wicked. No, I am like actually excited I for know. it. I know. But I am annoyed that it's a two part thing. Oh, I hate that. Especially what I've seen Wicked like three times live. And it always is a thing where like what you like I just can't picture intermission happening and then waiting a year. Cause it's like isn't the best part usually the end? Like but I just it, don't get how they're gonna obviously they're gonna figure it out and both movies will be amazing, but just seems like a lot. I kind of do wish it was just one three and a half hour movie. Yeah, because I don't watch these movies, but you know how those like Avenger movies have like five parts and a new one comes out each year? Yeah. I guess it will be like that, but with Wicked. I guess it is kind of fun. Like we have something to look forward to in 2025 too. Like I have nothing else in 2025 on my list yet, but now I can add Wicked part two. It'd be kind of funny. Um, I hope this doesn't happen, but it'd be kind of funny um, if it didn't do that good. So then they edit the next one to be so, so fast paced. Like I'm pitching. <laughs> Mr. It was Beast a, it, editing. It was originally two hours and 20 minutes. Now it's an hour and 10 minutes because <laughs> things are sped up. They cut out whole entire segments that keep everything together. And they randomly like do like an action in the middle of the movie. <laughs> that, it won't happen. I know it's no, probably going to slay, but... That is crazy that they're so confident it's going to do good. There's already a part two because, yeah, what if it came out this November and just everyone hated it and nobody went and it made like $10. <laughs> they would still just release it next year. I feel like maybe then it would go to streaming. This is what Straight I... Straight to streaming. This is what I think. They, they, they did a few studies and it's 100% going to make back its... Budget, so yeah. they would for sure at least both them theatrically or whatever you say that. Yeah, theatrically because it, I feel like it was it's like definitely gonna make back. Oh, its I mean budget. it's literally wicked. Everyone's literally everyone's gonna go see it. And everyone. I, I don't think I'm making this up, but it's actually the first wicked movie. Yeah, it's the first one, and Ariana Grande is playing Glenda, or is it is it she the other one? Um, I think she's Glenda. What's the other one, Glenda? Is it Glenda and Glinda? That's the thing is I am excited for this movie, but I'm not like, I don't know like everything about Wicked. <laughs> oh yeah, I love the song Popular. Oh, Popular. And, I, and this song, how does it go? Um, oh, oh! <laughs> Wait, so, you, know, you know, this one that says, I have been changed for good. I remember in oh. music class me saying that and that. And but at that time I didn't watch the music v- v- musical, but and I was like, this song... I just love it. I feel like that will be in part two, if I'm guessing, because that's kind of when they're friends. Like they're saying, you have changed me for good. So that'll probably be next year. But if I remember correctly, when I've seen it live, right before intermission, you hear the Green Witch. 
say this, um, sing this line. And then it goes to the intermission. So everyone be prepared. You're going to hear this and then the credits. <laughs> and then it will say directed by blah, blah, starring Ariana and Cynthia. And then it will say, come back in a year, girl. Cause part two, that's going to be the last note though. I guarantee it. Oh my gosh. I'm excited for that. And then it just will go to black. Do you think? Yeah, for sure. Maybe white. Oh. Just for a little bit of a change. But back to the Illuminati. They are promoting Wicked, Cynthia and Ariana, and they did the Vanity Fair lie detector video that everybody does when they're promoting something. And they asked both of them if they believed in the Illuminati, which I thought was kind of funny because that gives like 2014 energy, but I love how we're bringing it back. Oh, yeah. they. Um, it was it was part of the series of questions that were kind of just dumb questions. Oh, yeah. Like, do you believe in aliens? Is the Earth flat? Is the moon land was the moon landing fake? So Ariana said she doesn't know if the Illuminati is real, but then Cynthia said, "I believe it is real." Well, and the, then she said, "But I'm not in it." Well, it was crazy because Ariana Grande was was almost about to say no, but then she said, "I don't know, actually." I know that just was <laughs> weird. Like, if the Illuminati is real, this upper echelon society that we're all their puppets and they control everything. Um, I actually do believe that Ariana wouldn't know about it. I don't think Beyonce would know about it. Jay-Z, Lady Gaga, like they aren't going to let these celebrities into it. Like that would ruin everything. Yeah, just because these celebrities have these like social media accounts that have millions of followers. So they could randomly at any time because they have access to the, those accounts out the Illuminati, which oh, would ruin yeah. the whole entire Illuminati if it is real. I know. They're like, are we really going to let BB Rexa in? And then she's going to, yeah, do a Snapchat story and release all the info. Like, I feel like maybe if it was real, they would use these celebrities as puppets. But literally, I feel like even the president wouldn't know. I feel like it's this secret society that lives in Antarctica and they just control everything. But <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not, I, I don't get the Antarctica power. I'm kind well, of picturing... Like, I feel like they would have like an underground bunker there. Uh, okay. What are you picturing? I'm kind of picturing like they spread across the world, you know? Oh, They're so everywhere. maybe like one would. Like, like one could be a be like live in Nebraska. Like they'd work at a Starbucks. Yeah, but but they're like an under... Like, couldn't you kind of picture... Let's say the Illuminati Israel. There's like these like lower class Illuminati members where they they have quote unquote regular jobs just to absorb the... Um, oh, the culture. The cultural society and stuff. Oh, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> if I had to picture like... I feel like I do believe something like that's real. Like there's something that like they control everything. You know what but, I mean? Because like why wouldn't there be? Yeah, if this Israel, I agree with you though. I don't think it's like... Um, I, I don't think it'd be connected to the people that we think it'd be connected to. So, for example, the president of the United States. I don't even think it would have to do with, like, any of these world leaders that we know the names yeah. of. I feel like it would be, like, undercover people that, like, they don't even have Wikipedia pages. Oh, and shit. <laughs> yeah, because this, the, the, if there is an Illuminati and they're putting Illuminati symbols in a Kesha music video. Like, remember the Die Young music video? People were like, you guys, there's triangles. But, like... Are they really, like, if I'm picturing this super high above everybody society, like, what do they care about the Die Young music video? You know what I mean? That's why I feel like when these pop stars have put Illuminati references in their music videos, like, that's not, they just want to pretend they're part of it to be cool. Yeah, because it does add to your mystique or something. Yeah. But I did find it interesting with this Vanity Fair lie detector thing. So... They were asking Cynthia about, um, about um, Oprah Winfrey, and she was saying... Oh, she said such kind things to me and stuff. But then they asked her, do you think the Illuminati is real? And she said, probably. Oh, did she, did she actually say yes? Yeah, she said yes. And she said Oprah's part of it. But people always say <laughs> I like... Made, I made up that part. But, but. like, um, you know, Oprah's like a billionaire and she's yeah. like so influential. It's interesting that she quote has met someone that people assume is in the Illuminati and she thinks it's real. Oh, yes. Yeah, I so kind of thought that was interesting. But so you're I, saying Oprah's in it. I feel like Oprah wouldn't be part of the Illuminati. Yeah, but I feel like... If I just thought that whole like... A twist of events was interesting. I feel like if you think of all celebrities, though, like maybe she would kind of like they'd fly her out to Antarctica and she wouldn't know it was the Illuminati, but they would kind of be feeling her out, you know, maybe her. And then like, I'm guessing it'd be Oprah. Who else would be like maybe invited? Morgan Wallen. Oh, and, then, oh, and then Tyra Banks. <laughs> That, that covers Banks. that covers all of society. For Oprah some... <laughs> covers like everybody pretty much. Morgan Wallen's like the d beer drinkers, and Tyra Banks is everybody else. So like 
Those three people are, are all the Illuminati needs. They don't need Kesha. They don't need Ariana Grande. They just yeah, need those mostly people Tyra. Have everything. They mostly need Tyra Banks. <laughs> don't you kind of think that talking about celebrities being an Illuminati, I could see a world where back in the 90s and before the 90s, celebrities were in the Illuminati. For example, oh. like um, our mom was watching this documentary about models in the 90s and about how it was so glamorous and stuff. I could just kind of see a world where some of those models were a part of it. Um, just because, like, they technically they didn't have social media and stuff, but they didn't. And, like, and how could they ever out the Illuminati? Because, like, when they're doing these talk shows, everything's already planned and they could yeah. probably cut it out if they did say, I'm but part of the Illuminati. The only reason I don't think that is because when I'm picturing these people who, like, the president's not even involved, they're so above everyone That's in any Antarctica. Like, what do they care about a model who's relevant for five well, years? Well, this is what I'm thinking. You know what I mean? What I was pitching was someone in the Illuminati has a crush on them. So they oh. don't ever tell them the Illuminati is real, but they are technically part of the Illuminati because that's who they hang around. Oh, I could you know see they I'm let saying? them, they bring them into the Illuminati, they fly them out to Antarctica, then they do a little spell on them to wipe their mind <laughs> and send them back to the Vogue headquarters. I feel like maybe stuff like that does happen because I feel like even if you're in the Illuminati, you might be like, I want to meet Shaq. So then like you fly Shaq out, but then he obviously, he might tell everyone, so you do the little dust on his face, like the little spell, you know, they probably have wands. Yeah. They do a little wand trick. So he forgets everything. But I feel like they do do stuff like that. They definitely have flown out Shaq, um, Kate Moss. Kevin Durant. Nathan Kress. Talking about the Illuminati though, is that the more we discuss it, the more it sounds like complete bullshit. Like, yeah. but like, um, I'm not saying that like, like how we live in like this world where there's like capitalism and stuff. Like maybe like there is some like person planning everything, but I just, when I actually think about it, like I I don't I just don't know how I feel about the Illuminati yeah. because it just sounds so so dumb. But I think what we're talking about is another version of the Illuminati. That yeah. like that isn't I that isn't like what someone would typically think the Illuminati is. Yeah, I feel like when I really just think rationally and don't get all caught up in the lore of it all, because you know it just sounds fun oh, thinking of the yeah. secret people and then like we're all puppets. Like that just is fun, obviously. Oh, yeah, because the thing about it is it does sound horrible. Like, oh, my gosh. But, you know, th th just like you were saying, there is something kind of like about just glamorous. It. <laughs> but then when I actually think about it, it's like if there was an Illuminati, like, wouldn't they somehow, like, wouldn't they care about the Earth? Like, they would make it so we wouldn't have so much plastic waste. Like, they but would... But they are so wealthy, they could just go to another planet. Hey. But wouldn't they be like, we hey. care... <laughs> <Joking. laughs> <laughs> I feel like they would care somewhat about the Earth. Because they'd be like, girl, like, this is... We control this whole earth. Like we need to, they would, I feel like they would make it better. <laughs> yeah, that is true because yeah. I feel like they would have made sure Katy Perry's latest album was better. Like that, <laughs> that alone is proof the Illuminati isn't real. They would have, they would have made her go back to the studio. Say, okay, girl, you're on the right track. Like, let's just go back in the studio and work a little bit, do a little bit more rewrites. And like, she could have came back with Teenage Dream 2.0, but she didn't, which makes me think the Illuminati, if it ever was real, it, it ended, it ended recently. I think the Illuminati's always moving, though. They're like, okay, we aren't focused on Katy Perry. We're focused on Sabrina Carpenter. And then when Sabrina Carpenter, like, stops her too, okay, okay, we're focused on, like, like this new person. Oh, yeah, that sucks. <sighs> if the Illuminati's listening, just really, um, go, um, really, um, somehow control Katy Perry for her next album. Then remember she did that eye twitch thing and everyone said, she's the robot, but her um, her eyelash was stuck because it was glued. And then like she did this weird eye twitch and everyone was like, you guys, like she is the robot. <laughs> what? It just, I wonder, it just, I wonder why she would be a robot. Like they, the Illuminati would have killed her and like uh, made her into a robot. Is that like the theory? Yeah, something like that. And then people think she's John Bonet, which actually John Bonet is on my topics today. Shit. It's funny us talking about the Illuminati because it's just, Oh, fun and fresh. <laughs> but then it would be fun one of these days to bring someone on the podcast or something that's a scary conspiracy theory person. I'm talking about oh. they're, they're, they're in the middle of us right now. And we actually have so much anxiety in our brain when they're talking because there's these people I've seen videos of and I have to click up after five minutes. Well, oh my they go God. so deep into the Illuminati. And like, for example, let's just say John Bonet's murder. Like somehow they go from John Bonet's murder to like, JFK being assassinated to somehow like we're actually just all um fish in a pond and we're gonna die tomorrow like those people are so scary but it sounds no. fun to just get go into the headspace for a day and be anxiety filled no that would be fun to have a guest <laughs> like that like they're talking about it neck is bulging out of 
I mean, <laughs> next vain. podcast, bro show featuring um, Alex Jones. I know. I picture, I picture somebody <laughs> vain bulging out of neck, face so red, sweating, <laughs> and they're screaming. And like, you know, those people who like, they're so passionate about something, they might like beat us up. They say, uh -huh. do something. And then like, and then and then I would pull out an apple just because I want to munch an apple. They would start this whole conspiracy theory about how apples are turning everyone into non-alpha males, and like, and like they flip the apple out of my hand and say, "This poison." Do you remember? Do you remember when we first got the first COVID vaccine? And like, there was all this drama. Like, some people were like, "You guys, like, do not get it." And then one of our sisters sent us a TikTok as a joke. It was of one of those conspiracy people and they were screaming so loud in the camera <laughs> saying, if you got the vaccine in one year, they said in one year, you're going to be brain dead. The whole, everyone's going to be brain dead. And then I remember like for a split second, I was like, what if they're right? And in one year we are brain dead. And as far as I know, we aren't yet. <laughs> but like those people are scary because the thing that yeah those people are so scary the thing about it is like whenever i see something like that or hear something like that for like two seconds i am like that would suck I know, but, then like, I, but then i go to rational me and i'm like okay like it was actually backed by science and stuff. i know like, i'm, I'm like, not gonna be blamed that i don't think i know when i saw that i was like okay like i'm gonna start squeezing my injection spot where they did the vaccine and hope hopefully i can squeeze it out I <laughs> 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 would it even be possible? <laughs> I mean, my whole thing with that, like, even if those um, theories were true about the vaccine and it's going to kill everyone, like, which it is, <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of okay with it because, like, everyone in our family got it. So I was like, oh, I'm down to like die with my whole family. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I feel like I'd be, if we all died together, like, it'd be less sad. Oh, yeah. Well, when I like truly thought about it, though, I totally get where you're coming from. I I actually knew 100% it was fake because I was like, let's say, okay, so basically it goes back to Illuminati. Why is this elite group trying to kill us? Why would they do a vaccine that not even everyone's getting? Like, oh, what did yeah. they? Like, there's such easier ways to kill populations. Like, couldn't they just fly planes above everyone in the world and do little um secretive like um gas things that, also, <laughs> that like kill everyone? They could just drop nuclear bombs and say. Like, they would have no way to fight back. You know what I mean? If they really wanted to F shit up. Yeah. So th that's why the vaccine. Okay. <laughs> Watch out because they're going to do it. They're going to do it. <laughs> okay. But on to something more wholesome. We've spent literally almost 20 minutes making this into a conspiracy podcast. I wonder if anyone watching just before doing this, they didn't, they didn't add up one hour before and it was kicking in and they actually had to pause the podcast eight minutes and say, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you that would that? be the worst if you were so high you'd be like oh my god and you watch if you were so high and watch those people who scream doing conspiracies <laughs> you would automatically go psychotic for sure oh for sure at, at least for a day but okay on to something lighter john benet um <laughs> but if you've been listening to our podcast from the beginning he, she actually there's a lot of lore about john benet in the bro show community because Jacob used to have a deep fear about her. So did I. I'm not going to just put it on Jacob. For some reason, if you were young when the John Bonet story hit, you are scared of her, even though she's the victim. I don't know what it is, but like, just she is send. She's it's the scariest thing ever because you're a kid watching the news and they're saying a kid has got murdered and no one knows where the killer is and like she was a beauty pageant person, which somehow makes it scarier. Like, I feel like that, that is why, like, it has, she has such a chokehold. And if you, yeah, it's just this whole thing of, like, she went missing. And then it's, it's kind of scary because it's not like, um, she was at a public park and died. Yeah. I feel like what made it scary to me when I really think about it is that she was, she died in her family home. So then it. It's just the the thought of like sleeping while you always sleep and then dying there. Yeah. By like not dying naturally, but actually being murdered. That's like, t that like would is terrifying. And then it makes me scared of her because I, I'm not even, just the whole idea of it's fucked. I know. I just don't, I want to, I don't get why. I want to know if anyone else listening also twisted it for some reason and they're scared of John Bonet. Like when I was a kid, I never was scared of her killer. I was, I was just scared of John Bonet. I don't know why it all went to her. But, like, she is just a triggering subject. I know, because it's, I mean, it's kind of fascinating when I'm really scanning my brain because if someone said right now, this is the motto and they showed me a photo, I kind of know for a fact. I wouldn't have nightmares about them, but if someone showed me a photo of John Monet, I actually think I would have nightmares. I and know. I don't really know exactly why, but I would. And for, if you're like Jacob and I and you have a deep-seated traumatic phobia of her, I just want to prepare everyone because it's coming back into the zeitgeist hard. 
Okay, they're but, making a Paramount Plus show acting it out. It like, comes back every two years, though. I know, but it came back in 2020. Have they ever acted it out, though? Like, no, that seems a little bit insensitive just because, like, the dad is still alive, the brother, and, like, now they have to watch Melissa McCarthy be in a show about her. Wait, so how do they, like, what is it based off of? You know, because, like, how do you make it factual? It's just that she's playing the mom and then some other guys playing the dad. And is she going to make it a comedy? I think she said she said she wants to bring like her bridesmaid vibe into it. Oh. She said that yes, it's a sad story, but she thinks it could be like funny. Mm. I'm just kidding. She didn't say any of that up, but that would be cool seeing her in a serious role. I'm assuming she won't. Maybe the mom was funny and that's why they hired her. But like, I don't think she'll have any jokes. But maybe she will. Yeah, I could. I could see either way. But I don't think they've announced who's gonna play John Bonet yet. I've been trying to audition. <laughs> For some reason, in my mind, the first person that came to mind was like, okay, I'll give it to Anna Sophia Robb or Dakota Fanning. But it's like, they're literally 30 now. But you know, in my mind, I picture them as that role. They should somehow do time travel and have Dakota Fanning play it. That, I'm picturing the girl from, uh, hey, what's her name? Um, Bridget Hill Bithia. Oh, Anna Sophia Robb. Oh, that was yeah. my other pick. Oh, yeah, those she... are the two main, those are the two it girls. Is Anna Sophia Robb also the main character in um, Win Dixie? Yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. so she, she was needs the, to be it. And she was a little rich girl on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Like she had iconic role after iconic role. And then she went to college and now she's like an activist. Last time I saw her, she had a pixie cut. I think I follow her on Instagram. Someone that also goes into this realm of these people is we were at the grocery store the other day and on a People magazine, it showed this one actress and it said, I'm I'm becoming myself again. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Hayden that, Oh, okay, That person fits into this vibe. But she would also be a great pick for to put into a time machine and she could play John Bonet. Honestly, um, they should start doing this with child actors like... Um, Scanning every part of their face so then they can just do AI versions of them. I know. I'm like, joking. That might be unethical and stuff. But yeah. Still. Well, actually, it wouldn't be because I was my first thought was these young actresses today should have a shot. But then it's like, no, they shouldn't go to school. Like they shouldn't be playing <laughs> John Benet. Like I feel like they actually shouldn't. Like that seems traumatizing. <laughs> but then again, like I could see some kids like think they just love acting and like they want to play uh, John Benet. I feel like Dakota Fanning could handle it, but I don't know if these other girls could. And I just think. Somehow we need to get Dakota Fanning. To, I feel like if Dakota Fanning, as a thirty-year-old woman, played John Bonet, we would all would get it and it would work. Oh yeah, because I'm between the whole time they don't ever show it, but she's just she's just um walking on her knees. I know, and like they somehow shorten her arms with AI, short, yeah. make her head a little bit smaller. Like that would actually be that would be good. I mean, I could see that Audi thinking about that, you know. Oh yeah, I'm so excited because um I haven't watched it yet. Um, but Dakota Fanning's in a new Netflix show. Oh, yeah, mom's I watching know, that. I'm so excited. It feels like, like whenever you see someone like Anna Sophia Robert Dakota Fanning, it feels like somebody you were friends with as a kid, and now you're like, oh my God, we're going to catch up. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, because usually they aren't in things. I know, like they, they always are just going, they're just living their lives, and then every now and then they're like, I'm going to be an actress again for a bit. This is the most random thing, but it's the first thing I came to mind when we started talking about Dakota Fanning. But um, didn't we see her once at this um um fish restaurant and like, Santa Monica or something. I would have remembered that. Remember we I would were, remember seeing Dakota this is what Fanning. Happened. We were walking out, and then one of us said, "I think that's Dakota Fanning." And then we both looked and were like, "Oh, I think that might be her." And then we just left. Wait. Do you remember this? It's that one fish place that's like looks all rugged and gross, and it's wooden, but it actually has good food. Is it right on the ocean? Yeah. Gladstones. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was Gladstones. I would if I if I saw no, Dakota like Fanning in the flesh, and I never, I don't remember. Like that is effed up. I just, I just very vividly remember she was sitting on this chair, and, we, and one of us says that Dakota Fanning, and I said we think so. I kind I think of so. and remember. Then we, and then we just left. We thought it was cool, but yeah, we just left after that. Whoa! I must have been in like a bad mood that day to act like I didn't even put that in my memory. Like I feel like I would have stored that so deep in my memory. So, so you remember what I'm talking about? I though? Because I don't think I'm making seeing it up. somebody who was like they were like yeah, we, we were like oh it's Dakota Fanning, but yeah, I, but for some the reason thing about it, it was one of those stories going back to it, jogging my memory. Well, like, it wasn't 100% her. It was more the vibe of we just looked for five seconds and said, that's her, and then we just left, you know? Oh, okay. Blonde girl with sunglasses on, and we were like, that's Dakota <laughs> Fanning. <laughs> yeah, so John Benet is going to be entering the zeitgeist again with this new show. And also, I saw that her dad said that the police department hasn't been, they haven't DNA tested everything, and he doesn't know why. 
I remember like in 2020 when it was popping up again, they were saying like, yeah, there's this new DNA technology, but they don't, the police department doesn't, doesn't want to use it. Or and then something. he said, he said like, he didn't say they actually want to kill him, but he said, they're just waiting for me to die. So I don't have to worry about this anymore. But he said, just so they know, like my son is going to continue to do it. So. Oh, he's getting to continue to try to find out. Who yeah. Is. Yeah. I guess like, uh, yeah, that, yeah, I'd be, I was just going to say like, I guess like, it's just like they could. You, I thought the DNA would just be ruined by now because yeah, they all touched it, and like DNA, it just lives on there. It would live on there forever. Whatever, whatever DNA. I feel like yeah, people at the police the station all of these years, they all touched everything, and like the, even like People magazine touched everything. Like I feel like it, it all would be like ruins now. But the dad has hope, so I don't. He he obviously knows more. So I guess well, maybe Melissa McCarthy will somehow get it going again. My feeling about this show that you're talking about this Paramount plus one is that it's um it, yeah um it's gonna be horrible like it's just the, gonna uh, like like i feel like it might not suck that bad but but people just people just won't like how they made a show about it do they get paid because if the dad and the son actually approved it and they were like whatever this will get more attention on the case and it'll it'll make the police have more pressure on them. Did But do they somehow do it without paying them? Because that is actually effed up. That's what's like kind of fucked about this whole thing is that also, do they kind of get to put their input in about the script mm, and stuff? Because I feel like not. it just would be so weird. The, the whole, yeah, it just is such a weird situation. I know. I just hope they somehow get compensated. Well, didn't Anna Delvey have to sell her rights for that Netflix show? So maybe, is that similar to this? Oh, yeah, not? I think you would. But then I feel like there's other situations where I've heard where like it seems like the person wasn't involved, but I don't know. Hopefully, yeah, they get paid. I wonder, so you know how like this was such a big story? This is one that I'm not that familiar with, but we've probably discussed it sometime on the podcast. Madeline McLean or something? Oh, I never got into that one. Okay, so what? Me I'm... acting like it's a book series, but like <laughs> I'm not familiar with it. So, you know, there's, there's always Alice True Crime stuff. And a huge one that's coming to mind that's kind of a modern one is the Idaho College thing. Oh, that's a recent one. But what I'm trying to get to is, is there so much true con- crime stuff nowadays where there's never going to be like a model as iconic as the John Bonet thing and like the Madeline McLean thing? Because there's just too much happening now because yeah. the internet's so, so much content and stuff? Or am I wrong? I mean, I feel like that is it. I feel like there's just, yeah, there's so much chatter about all these horrific stories that if something truly horrific does happen, sometimes it doesn't even get attention. Yeah, because there's, there's so much. Yeah, there's so much, so much. Enough about her. Um, Last week, we talked about genies. Oh, so yes. So I thought it was just going to be a fleeting topic. Okay, genies, like, what is there really to talk about? But then I saw a comment on the video uh, thing of the podcast and someone was talking about how aren't genies um imprisonment or something yeah they're imprisoned and and then i was like i don't know much about genies all i know is from these movies like aladdin and uh what oh the camera shut off oh shit oh some people are going to be happy because i saw some people commented saying wait the camera's didn't shut off in this one it's not a true bro show podcast oh maybe i didn't f- um format that stuff Okay, but genies. All I know is like Aladdin and probably some other stuff. I just think of like this like little person in a bottle, like we said last. Wasn't the week. one in Aladdin kind of ripped? I remember a big muscly chest. Oh, I think he was kind of yeah. like, like a muscly so big he was, person. When he was in that little genie lamp, he was he was making use of his time doing push ups and stuff, calisthenics. Okay, but genies. So it actually is way deeper than just these movies. I realized, which I didn't know. So it goes back to ancient myths and legends from the Middle East. And it actually is part of um, Islam. Like it's it's mentioned in the Quran, I guess. Wait, what? Yeah, but it's not, it's not like what, it's not like the genies that we're thinking of basically. So what I think happened from what stuff that I read is like, so yeah, I I mean, um, it's like myths and stuff from the Middle East and then people heard about it. And then basically they kind of like, completely whooped it for like these for like these western movies and stuff so what we know about genies like isn't actually like isn't like the original but they actually talk about genies and you get three wishes no but yeah like um three wishes part that's like part of like um the genie the, the disney version yeah the westernized genie i guess oh yeah 
But so th- that's interesting. Like it can be negative or positive. But but I was like I, I was like thinking like I don't know more about like the genie that I'm thinking of because this is probably like way deeper. This because uh, it's part of a literal religious text. But basically, like in these Western movies, like Aladdin and stuff, like um. G- genies are like magical creatures from a battle and stuff, you know? Yeah. But then I guess in these um Middle Eastern movies, um genies are usually creepy entities comparable to demons. This is a quote from like some one of these like fandom websites or something. Oh, uh, wait, what is Oh, so from Disney it's happy and then what makes it scary? But then like in these Middle Eastern movies, like if there is a genie, like oh, it's usually like a demon or something. Oh my god. No, it's like comparable to a demon. Okay. But here's some like just fun facts about um genies. So yeah, tell me. I was just like researching genies last night and I was thinking like, it's weird that I guess something that I read was about how genies were like before humans, but there's still some left. Oh, what? That's like, that's like what, that's what like. A, Dinosaurs they, were effing with them and stuff? Maybe it would be, I don't know, but like they were even before humans. <laughs> but, but yeah, so when a genie's in a battle, it's actually in prison. Oh, I was surprised to read that from the comments. And they, somebody actually commented that in Aladdin, they free the genie at the end and his shackles come off, which I don't remember that. But somebody said that happened. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I I guess I yeah I didn't understand. Like, I thought it was just a genie lives in a bottle. But so these genies would um, be like floating or whatever. And then someone would trap them in a bottle. Like you can trap them in any like in a lot of things like in like um metal cases and stuff. And then oh. basically, you just had them in prison. But then I guess if um if when you let the genie go, if if um they're gonna tell their genie friends like, uh oh, like this person put me in prison, so let's not go by them. Oh, they don't seem scary though. Like that doesn't give me demon energy. That gives me like well, the demons are locking them up. I guess genies can be negative or positive. Oh, which yeah. are piece, these people. Like, do some people, like, actually believe in them and, like, they think genies might be floating around somewhere? Well, like I said, it's um part of Islam, so... I, I, I mean, I don't I don't, I don't, don't know how, like, deep it goes. Like, oh, I, yeah. I don't know, like, there's, like, parts of the Bible where, like, no one really believes it, but it's just part of the Bible. So I don't know if it's, like, one of those things. Oh, or, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. But they're also immortal. Like, they basically can live forever. Oh, my God, so maybe they are... They're still around because they're immortal, but they're just trapped. Someone has them trapped. And they're shapeshifters. Like, like they can go into snakes and stuff. Oh. The idea of a shapeshifter is so scary. Like, what if, like, you met someone at the mall, and then you kept looking at them, and then they turned into a rack, and then you looked for another 10 minutes, and that rack turned into a rabbit. Like, oh my God. that would, like, be so fun. The iconic um, video of Nicki Minaj blinking, and it turns into a reptile. What? Yeah. Oh, I think I know She's a shapeshifter. I'm kidding. Three days every thousand years, they have a genie convention. Three days every thousand years? Yeah, they have a genie convention. Wait, who? The genies? <laughs> I was just looking at this random ass fandom website. So I don't know. I'm, I think this is, just a, ta- <laughs> this is just talking about like more of a Disney genie. There's this a fandom about. website for genies? I love how there's like, in, there's a fandom for everything. <laughs> yeah. Like, and- isn't there probably a genie convention every year where like people meet up and just talk about genies in a holiday and ballroom? Oh, I bet so, because there was, like, a few fandom websites about genies. Because oh there's a bunch of, like, books and movies that talk about oh genies. God, how deep the lore went. The genie lore. I saw... So, you know how everyone talked about Rap Boy Summer? It was, like, this thing. All girls oh. want to date rap boys. I didn't know about this other thing that girls started wanting to date fruity boys. Fruity men. Oh, so it's just, just men that act more stereotypically gay? Oh, yeah, because I saw this article that said, women are into fruity men, study says. And I was like, okay. You click on it. It's, you click on the article. It shows that Harry Styles, Timothy Chalamet, I guess those are the fruity men. But I guess there's actually a study... That says um, women are into fruity men. So this so maybe is we should surprising turn- to me because um, just because thinking back to being on YouTube and stuff, these um, like it was always a thing where these um girls would always be more attracted to the gay guys. Like whenever I'm on the internet, <laughs> they always are like are like hyping up these gay guys, saying this person's so hot. But then they're never hyping up the straight guys. So it kind of just makes sense in my mind. Oh, yeah. Apparently the study said that men with quote unquote feminine traits 
have a better chance at successful long-term relationships. And it's because women, I guess when you actually think about it, it isn't as dramatic as the title. Yeah, women, that's what It's I was not gonna... women want fruity men. It's just like they want a guy who is like not, like he still has a feminine side. He's sensitive. He's caring. He's paternal to their, because then you're then they would think, oh, he'd be a good dad. Like it makes sense to have a long-term partnership with them. But wait, wait, I guess so it isn't who? like fruity. <laughs> like what do you even picture? In your who picture did this of fruity. <laughs> That's the thing. Who's doing studies on this? Like, is it just like a, like a study someone did on Tinder or something? Oh yeah. I don't know. I was just surprised because I heard about rat boy summer, how everyone was into rat boys, but I didn't hear about the fruity men TikTok trend. I guess it was a TikTok trend. All these people were, all these women were making videos saying, hell yeah. Like I want a fruity boy. Like, and I, I did. I missed that. I wasn't. That didn't hit my um, algorithms. So I just wanted to share it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I thought this has been a thing for like the last decade or so. Oh yeah. Just, I guess now there's officially a study. Fruity men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So women want fruity men. So if you're a man out there and you're a straight man listening to this podcast and you want to have better luck with dating the gals, get fruity with it. Pull on, put on a whole fake personality. I know. Go on ASOS.com, buy a little mesh tank top, booty shorts, and yeah, be fruity. <laughs> I could like, um, I could see like the future is just like, it's just like, um, people create this type of family. Um, it's, it's two gay guys and two, um, and, and then maybe, and then maybe like, um, um, it's like a straight girl or, and like, and like they create their own family. Well, like. They have kids together and like those two gay guys are like dating and then like and like and like the girl is kind of dating someone. But, like, oh, yeah. But they are, like, just a but, modern family. Yeah. Maybe that like we could take that being a thing kind of maybe. Oh, isn't that Glitter Forever 17? She has the whole thing where like she does. She talks about on TikTok how she has a gay husband and she says she loves it. She's like, yeah, I'm straight. He's gay. And like we have a blast. Like it's so much fun. She was like, I recommend marrying a gay and it's more about like creating like not a romantic thing but creating like a partnership yeah she's like it is marriage to me like this is who i want to marry and like we will sometimes bring home a guy together and like he'll like mess around with him then go to my room go with me and like it's just a vibe so it's just so much fun so it, this is more advice to now the girls like if you maybe you should try dating a gay guy you know yeah and then i guess it would be like the type of thing where like you guys are dating but then you guys like also do your own thing like sexually yeah, basically. Okay. That's what I feel like it is. But I'm waiting for the study now of men want manly women. Men, study finds men want manly girls. Like, when's, is that a thing? Like, when will that news, like, guys, I feel like, I, maybe I just, there probably is a part of TikTok like this, but you know how girls are so vocal on TikTok saying, I want a rap boy. I want a fruity boy. But when are the men going to start talking about all these girls they want, you know? So we can get trends for them going on BuzzFeed. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Was this on BuzzFeed? I think it was actually. You know, that's just the classic website. <laughs> yeah, classic. So I'm wearing cotton underwear right now. <laughs> what? I feel like we're going into an ad. <laughs> oh, you know, and you're going to say, I buy my underwear from Target or some but shit. I just want to talk about how easily influenced I am. I saw a YouTube video and this guy said, I switched to all cotton underwear for a year or something along those lines. And he said it had all these benefits. And then I went deeper into it and people were saying, do not wear polyester. Like it's the reason why there's microplastics in our body. And they said your armpits and your groin area, like that's the most absorbent, absorbent, is that a word? Absorbent parts of your body that absorb the most. So they're saying if you wear like polyester underwear, that's going to F up your testicles. Like it's this whole thing. So I switched to cotton underwear 100%. And I just had to bring up something because this cotton underwear I got has a penis pocket. You know, most most of my underwear in the last 10 years hasn't had that. Oh, I, I, I know what you're talking about. I've had underwear like that. I know, but isn't it? It's pretty rare nowadays, I feel like. At least the underwear I usually buy doesn't have it. Like it has the aesthetic where it looks like there's a penis pocket, but there isn't. And if for people who don't wear men's underwear, it's just like this classic thing on boxers where there's a little penis pocket. And I just want to know, like, does anybody actually use the penis pocket? Because uh, I think it's it's so oh yeah, like so if you stand up and pee is out that's yeah it's full? like if you're standing up and peeing you don't have to pull down the waistband of your underwear you just put your penis through the penis pocket but I just would so never penis pocket I just would never mess around with the penis pocket because like I just picture it splattering all over the underwear like I just I can never see myself using the penis pocket I haven't 
And I just want to bring this open to you and the audience. Like, is anybody using it? Or is this more of a 1920s thing? Even if my underwear had a penis pocket, I would just I would just do my usual thing of like, I don't know what the exact word is for it, but just like not pulling down the underwear, but just pulling down that part of the Yeah, underwear. the waistband. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't F around with a penis pocket. I know. Cause like, <laughs> penis pocket. Because it's like, is it that hard to just lower the waistband? Because then I also like, imagine if there was a butt pocket and like you didn't, when you went, when you went, poop like you didn't take off your underwear you there's just a, a butt pocket but there it's is like, a big difference so if you if you, had a butt pocket, you can't even wipe or use like a bidet or whatever you do <laughs> that's true <laughs> <laughs> no, but with the penis pocket it still just gives the vibe of like you're gonna shake your like you have to shake it after to get the water off or the pee and then that will hit your boxers you know yeah but with like this kind of underwear thing uh is it uncomfortable using it when you walk out because that's like one of the reasons I don't want to wear cotton underwears because, like, when I'm on runs, I I feel like I have a memory of, like, wearing cotton underwear and that, like, really is, like, a chafing material yeah. rather than this polyester material is, like, way more, like, flexible on I the know. skin. Oh, that's what sucks. But, like, about all these people who claim you aren't supposed to wear these synthetic fibers because it is way more comfortable wearing polyester things, like, if you're working out. But, um... I did get 100% cotton underwear. And then, like I said, I had the penis pocket. And I just didn't really like it. So then I got 95% cotton and then 5% oh. elastane or... So that that's like the happy medium. Oh, okay. So it's not like it's still comfortable. Oh, yeah. Because the other one was weird. It was just like you're wearing this weird... Yeah, I just... I, it isn't it. I was so, like, I guess I'll get the microplastics in my ball sack. What was like... Yeah, I, I, that's got, it's just funny how, like, there's so much to think about. I know. I'm, from what I saw, there's not really any studies about it. They've only done, like, this. The, the study that everyone kept citing is about dogs. I guess they did it to dogs. Wait, they, they had put, dogs with underwear? Yeah, they put dogs in cotton underwear and then polyester underwear, and they the women dog, the female dogs weren't fertile when they wore the polyester, and then the men's dogs, like, their sperm went down or something. Something along those lines, but... All I know is they put some golden retrievers in underwear and just kept them in kennels. Like, what? Let the uh, dogs live. They want to play fetch. They don't yeah. want to put on polyester underwear. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I might keep wearing polyester underwear because then, like, because then I'm, like, less fertile. Oh, that's true. It's like I'm not an easy even, way. I'm not even like doing like it just is fun to be less fertile. Oh, that's true. It's <laughs> like birth control, but you don't really have to, like, think about it. Yeah. I remember that was always the classic <laughs> thing they tell you in science class growing up. They say, you guys, if you wear skinny jeans, you aren't going to be able to have enough sperm to get someone pregnant. I would always be so embarrassed. Yeah, they told they said that in your class too. Yeah, in health class. That always was a thing, but it's like, I don't want to get anyone pregnant, so I'm going to continue to wear spray on skinny jeans. Yeah, I I remember just being like, I actually am wearing skinny jeans. And I thought they would like say, you can't wear this anymore, Jacob. <laughs> I was saying, do you want to get a woman pregnant? You got to start wearing looser pants. <laughs> But that's probably a thing they say now, too. Like, you can't be wearing the polyester uh, boxers if you want to get your girl pregnant. You know, get your chick knocked up pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> what? Should we go? Yeah. I th this is the first podcast of October 2024. Oh, my God. Welcome to spooky season, girls. I know. I always love when a whole month has a theme. It is pretty fun. I know. And it's so weird because today we're recording this on October 1st and I'm wearing a sweater. So are you. Like, it actually it actually got a lot colder today. It got like, yeah, 10 degrees colder. Yeah. No, today's a high of 70 and yesterday was like 88. So like they, the people who control the weather, they like put it down. They, I love how they're kind of celebrating October. I know. Like, oh yeah, like... We want it to be pumpkin patch weather, so we're going to crank down the nap and a little saying, bit. And okay, look, y'all, let's give them a little moment. Rem rem remind everyone to go to the pumpkin patch. Yeah, because because big pumpkin patch paid the weather people. Oh, yeah, I love how we're starting this podcast with these crazy conspiracies and ending it with it. It's beautiful. Well, see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.